In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an alternative to Google Analytics called StatCounter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to statcounter.com and what I'm going to do is click the register link in the top left and I'm going to put in for username, I'm going to put in self assembly sites. Another password, I'm going to go to GRC password. I'm just going to fill out all these details here. And I've got to tick, I accept the terms and conditions and register account. I'm going to save that and they've created the account. So now I'm going to add a project. So I'm just going to call this self assembly sites, put in the URL of self assembly sites.com. Uh, upper and lowercase doesn't actually matter in a, a website address, it's, it's not case, domain names are not case sensitive. And I'm going to choose a category, I'll choose education, visit length. What this is is if you want to count somebody as visiting your website one time, how long do you want to decide how long that uh, that time is? So if somebody visits your website, goes and gets a cup of coffee and come back 10 minutes later, is that the same visit or is that two visits? So that's what the maximum visit length is here. The default here of 30 minutes is pretty good. This is a choice that, for example, Google Analytics don't give you. Google Analytics automatically default, I believe, to 30 minutes as well, but you don't have a choice. So it's interesting that Stat Counter give you a choice on that. Here's another useful thing you can do. You can actually add your own computer IP address so that when you visit your website, it doesn't count in your visits. And you can also make your statistics publicly available. If you want to do that, you tick that box there. So I'm going to click Next, and that's it. Now we've got to install the code. So there's a bunch of different options here. A visible counter, 1998 web, web design counter, an invisible counter, a visible counter on the home page, or a button. My preference is the invisible counter. I'm going to click on that one, and next. And now they have some information on different types of websites and how to install the code. So they have an option here for WordPress.org, which is what we use. So I'm going to give that option there. They've got an option here for HTML only, which is the opposite of JavaScript and XHTML compliant. And it says only choose this option if your website must be XHTML compliant. And I'd suggest that you choose that because almost every website is XHTML compliant these days. So I would normally turn that on. So I'm going to hit next. So here's the code. So this is just like the Google Analytics code. We're going to copy it. I'm going to open a notepad window and save the code. And what we can do here, go to plugins, add new, search for stat counter and click install now. And then what we need to do is enter the project ID and security code. So this is just like with Google Analytics. We have the manual way of installing it, which is basically copy and paste this code into the theme, or we can install a plugin. But again, I'm going to do both. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the appearance and editor and open that. I'm going to go to footer and I'm going to put just before the body slash body. I'm going to paste in the stat counter code and update that. And I'm going to refresh this. And now if we do view page source, you see that the stat counter is here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the stat counter page, I'm just going to right click on my projects and open in a new tab. Click on the project because this is one of my favorite things about stat counter. It actually has started tracking already and it tracks in real time. So you can see your visitors and your page loads. For example, if I visit another page and refresh here. 
and there you go you can see that the page loads has gone up to three and unique visitors has remained at one which is correct because there's only one visitor which is me and I've now loaded three pages so it's really cool that that is updated in real time so let's go back to the installation what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the theme code I'm gonna remove the stat counter code here and update and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to plugins and add new I'm going to search for stat counter just like they advise and I'm going to do install now and activate so now I go to stat counter admin what we need to do is we need to go back out to the information here and we need to go to project ID and security code that's what we need to get so the project ID actually I can see it here in this code uh, I don't know if I'll be able to copy it easily there, but I have it here. So you can see that's the project ID. I'll paste that in there. And the security code is this one, SC security. And I'm going to choose counter position footer and force some visibility. Yeah, I want to make it invisible. So I do update options. And if I go and I refresh the page here and do a few page source, and we can see that the stat counter code is there. And if we go to the project summary and it hasn't updated yet, sometimes there's a, a minor lag in updating, and you can see it's updated to four page loads now. So that's working correctly. One of the cool things about Stack Counter is the uh, massive amounts of information that they make simply available. Entry and exit pages, popular pages, keyword analysis. So if you click on my projects in the top left, you can add new projects here. So for different websites, you just add a new project. And what you can do is if you click into the project, you can view any of these piece of information. The recent visitor map is one of my favorites. When that's being populated, it looks very cool. It gives you a Google map with all the different areas highlighted. Also gives you a visitor path, so it shows what pages people were viewing. So this is me viewing each of these different pages in turn. And you can also see a lot of information about what browser. So you can see I'm using browser Firefox 5 and the resolution that the screens are running in. What operating system, for example, I'm on Windows 7, JavaScript. So there's a lot of different information in StatCounter. You can only, with StatCounter, log up to 500 entries. So that's, they keep a log of the last 500 visitors to your site. And you can upgrade to 5,500 for $5 a month. I really like the interface with StatCounter. So I think it's worthwhile paying for in order to have all this information. So that's statcounter.com. And this is one of my favorite alternatives to Google Analytics where you don't need quite as much power and it's a little bit more user friendly and easier to look at.